you know that every tree has two types of wood inside of it? Yep. These two pieces of wood are from the same tree. Now picture this. You're searching for a certain look, or maybe you're trying to match a certain species of wood that you already have in your home. And you order a bunch of wood that you know is, oh, I don't know, red cedar, for example. But when you get it unloaded and into your workshop, you realize it looks nothing like the wood that you were expecting. You, my friend, have just found out the hard way the difference between sapwood and heartwood. Imagine that this log right here is a giant layered cake. You got your bark, you got your cambium. That's where the magic happens, baby. New growth. And then you got your two major players. Bam! Your sapwood and then your hardwood. <laughs> Okay, the sapwood. This is the young blood. It's lighter in color and is less desirable when it comes to most hardwoods, but not all of them. And I'll tell you about that later. Just hold your horses here. So as the tree grows outward, the inner sapwood cells die and transform into heartwood. What do you got to say for yourself there, boss man? This room's a mess, Kyle. <laughs> what do you got to say about sapwood versus heartwood? Um, they're different. <laughs> And there you have it, folks. Straight from the horse's mouth. Now the heartwood. This is the OG, the retired veteran. It's done pumping moisture and nutrients up to the rest of the tree. It's done retired and clocked out. Now it's all about strength and structure, as you can see. Picture it as the tree's spine. Notice that rich, dark color, too? That's from the extractives the tree's natural preservative. Now this stuff is tough and is the most sought after portion of the tree for a few good reasons we'll get into right now. As you can see here, heartwood tends to be darker than the sapwood. And that's where we run into problems because not all heartwood is dark and not all dark colored wood is heartwood. So what the heck? Now I asked Kendall about the sapwood versus heartwood dilemma and he had mentioned something about hickory and about how woodworkers sometimes get into trouble with their clients over that species. The problem is, is that the sapwood and heartwood of hickory look very different. So on pine, sapwood and heartwood look the same, but you can illustrate it or you can show it. Here's the sapwood layer right here. See the sap coming out of the end of the log? And this is the heartwood, the part of the wood that's actually dead. This is the part of the wood that feeds the tree. That simple. Sometimes people who order hickory cabinets think they got the wrong wood because the colors don't match what they expected. But it turns out they actually got the hickory they wanted. It's just that the sapwood and the heartwood look so darn different. And because of this, sometimes people get sued. Oops. And so we can all avoid this. Let's take a look at the differences between the heartwoods and the sapwood. All right, heartwood. This is your heavy duty champ. It's dense and usually stronger than sapwood. Most of the time, a lot of the time, pretty much every time. That deep color and grain, gorgeous. Perfect for that heirloom dining table that you'll be passing down for generations. This has nothing to do with the video, but I just wanted to show this. Look at that, that's freaking 10 below. Earlier this morning, it was like 18 below. It's not the cold that'll get you, it's the wind chill that penetrates into your bones and any exposed skin outside that hits that wind chill is literally like getting burnt with coldness. It's terrible. The first thing that we do when we come to the shop in the mornings is to fill up the boiler. Now, Back to the softwood versus hardwood stuff. Hardwood is the inner non-living core of the tree. It no longer transports water and nutrients to the rest of the tree, like the sapwood does. And because of these extractives that get inside of the wood's cell structures and kind of fill the gaps in there, it makes it less permeable for moisture and other stuff like that. And because of that, it would make it less susceptible to things like fungus, rot, mold, other bad things that could happen to the wood. On one hand, it makes it more rot resistant because moisture can't get in, you can't get no rot or no mold in there. And then on the other hand, you won't be able to get any stains or oils or finishes in there either. All wood in a tree starts out as sapwood. Now this is your flexible friend. It's lighter, softer, and easier to work with. It's the outer living layers of wood that come just after the cambium. Think of the cambium layer as the next layer of wood that the tree is currently working on. Sapwood is full of moisture and starches. It's the layer of wood that helps carry the water and nutrients up through the rest of the tree. Sapwood is good for smaller projects like shelving or even a cool river table like this one I use as my desk. 
Beer at the sawmill, gonna cut up this birch log into pallet parts for you. We're gonna really show you the difference between hardwood and sapwood. See, we got the sapwood fully exposed here on this piece of birch that we're cutting into. We just cut up all this birch, and now you can see true differences between heartwood and sapwood. This is the heartwood of the birch, and that's the sapwood of the birch, the outer living core that brings the nutrients up to the rest of the tree. Plus, it's usually a bit more budget friendly, except for hard maple sapwood. Let me explain to you why this species of sapwood is more expensive than others. Well, there's a couple reasons why hard maple sapwood is more expensive than other species of sapwood. Hard maple sapwood is really light, so it contrasts well with the heartwood of walnut. One of the hardest of the hardwoods that grow around here. Maple is a closed grain wood, so it's great for butcher blocks, cutting boards, cabinets, countertops, really anything that touches food. As we know, sapwood is usually softer than the heartwood, but the sapwood of maple is still hard enough to where you can match it to the heartwood of other species like walnut and cherry. That's the reason why sapwood from maple is more desirable because of the color and the fact that it retains its hardness even though it's a sapwood. It's a secret. Sapwood likes to soak up finishes and stains. It's more porous due to its active role in transporting nutrients within a tree. You can get some crazy cool looks with it. Think bold colors, unique textures. The sky's the limit, really. Building something using black walnut? Heartwood is the usual go-to, and if you're making a delicate, intricate carving, sapwood might be your best bet. If you want something that'll last forever, heartwood, on a tight budget, sapwood can still look amazing. You want something that looks cool and rustic? Maybe a blend of both will tickle your mustache. <laughs> So which one's right for you? It all comes down to your project and your style. What kind of stuff do you like? What do you like to look at? What's your style? Your own personal independent style. Availability is also a factor. As we learned out there with Kendall at the sawmill cutting up the birch, we found out that most sapwood is removed during the sawmilling process. For those of you that don't know, this is Kendall's brother, Keith. He's a pallet maker here at K&J Lumber. What do you got to say about these pallets here? They used to be fun. Now it's a job, built a hundred thousand of them, maybe more. They probably make a machine for that, <laughs> but <laughs> not here. <laughs> Used to be fun. Now it's a lot of work, he says. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's not a very good selling point. <laughs> no, it's just hilarious because I just wasn't expecting it used to be fun. And now it's work. <laughs> there you have it, folks. He loves his job. Some species have a wider sapwood layer, meaning that you'll likely find both hardwood and sapwood in the same piece of wood, like these pieces right here. I just know that some of my customers often show up and pick through my piles and pull out just the hardwood or the sapwood that they need for their projects, leaving me with the rest. And sometimes I offer at a discount. Discounted sapwood like that could be a good thing for woodworkers on a budget. And as we discussed earlier, there are some species out there that are most known and desired for their sapwood or heartwood. And knowing the differences between the two can help you make better lumber buying decisions in the future. Don't be afraid to experiment. Wood is alive and created by God. It's got character. Embrace the imperfections. That's what makes it beautiful. But choosing the wrong type of wood can be disastrous. Relying on sapwood or hardwood alone isn't always enough, no matter what you're building, an indoor or outdoor project. Ah, you're gonna need to know the right species of wood to work with. And in this video right here, we show you the best type of wood to work with and why it's not what you think it's gonna be. You're gonna wanna check this out before you start your next project. See you there, brother and sisters. I tell customers all the time, they ask me, where do you get, hey, where do you get your wood from? Where'd you get this lumber from? And I'm like, from trees. <laughs>